Miffy and Melanie were walking home from school. And Melanie said, Miffy, tomorrow is the last day of school before our summer holiday. Shall we make a present for our teacher? Oh, yes, said Miffy. I will ask my mother to give me a flower pot and I will paint a nice design on it. Good, said Melanie, and I will make some pretty paper flowers to go into your pot. Yes, said Miffy. That way our present will be from both of us together. So the two little girls went home, each to make their part of the present. Miffy painted a lovely heart on her flower pot and Melanie made some beautiful paper flowers. The next day, the two girls walked to school with each of their presents wrapped in gift paper. When the school class started, the teacher said, Dear children, today is the last day of school before our summer holiday, so this will be a special day. Miffy and Melanie raised their hands. We would like to give you a present, said Miffy. Melanie and I have made something special just for you. Oh, how nice of you, said the teacher. What a wonderful surprise. First, Miffy gave the teacher her present. The teacher unwrapped it very carefully. What a lovely flower pot, Miffy. Did you paint it yourself? Then Melanie came forward and gave her present to the teacher. When the teacher unwrapped it, she said, How thoughtful! Lovely flowers to go into a lovely flower pot. She was very pleased and thanked both girls. Now, said the teacher, it's time for us to all go out and have fun in the playground. So all the children had lots of fun on their last day of school. Miffy and Melanie played on the seesaw and while they were going up and down, Melanie pointed to the schoolroom window, which was lined with real flowers in real flower pots. At the end of each school year, each of us has to take home one of the real flower pots and take care of it until school starts again, said Melanie. I wonder which of the pots we shall get, said Miffy. When they all returned to the classroom, the teacher said, And now, children, I will give you each one of the flower pots to take home. And she began to hand each pupil one of the flower pots. When Melanie and Miffy left the classroom, they looked back and saw the teacher putting the pot with paper flowers in the windowsill. Because our flowers aren't real, they could stay in the classroom all summer, said Miffy. Now everyone has some lovely bright flowers, even the classroom. Miffy loved the sea. She liked to sail on it and she liked to sit on a beach and watch the sea. She could play with her ball, build a sandcastle and fly her kite. One day, Miffy's mother asked Miffy where she would like to have a summer picnic. By the sea, Miffy answered. What a nice idea, said Mother Bunny. We'll have our picnic at the beach. We can spread a large blanket on the sand and put up our special beach umbrella so that we won't get sunburnt, 
she said. Yes, said Miffy. And I hope my friends will be there too, so we can all play together. On the day of the picnic, it was sunny and warm. A perfect blue sky day. Miffy's mother prepared a lovely salad of carrots and cabbage and green and red peppers. It looked so delicious. She also made two bottles of carrot and parsley juice. Miffy's father said, I will get the car ready and you can put everything in the boot. arrived, they saw that Boris and Barbara Bear were also at the beach. And look, Auntie Alice and Aggie were there too. Boris and Barbara had a basket full of freshly picked blueberries from the woods. Auntie Alice had a large box of her home-baked biscuits and chocolate cake. She said, why don't we join our picnics together? What a Good idea, said Father Bunny. Let's spread this blanket out for all that wonderful food. How good it tasted. They ate everything. When they had finished, Auntie Alice said, before we play a game, let's all sing a happy summer song. Aggie began to play her accordion. As she played, the sound of the waves grew louder. So Aggie began to play louder as well. And while everyone was singing and Aggie was playing, no one noticed that the sea was coming closer and closer. First, the waves caught Miffy's bucket. It floated away. And then, before anyone realised, the sea had reached the towels. Oh dear, shouted Mother Bunny in surprise. Everything will get wet. Auntie Alice quickly moved the towels away from the water. I'm glad we finished all our food said Mother Bunny. Everyone laughed. We still had a wonderful picnic, said Miffy. Now, let's play. Where is my school bag, Mother? asked Miffy one morning. Your school bag is just where you left it, Miffy said her mother. But I have searched everywhere, said Miffy. I'll help you, said her mother. Let's search your room. No wonder you can't find your bag. Your room is a mess. You've left all your clothes and toys scattered around. But when you come home from school today, I'll help you tidy up your room. Here is your school bag, Miffy. Meanwhile, there was something happening at Boris and Barbara's house. Boris was shouting, Barbara, where is my hammer? Your hammer must be just where you left it, Boris. But I have searched everywhere, said Boris. I'll help you find your hammer, said Barbara. When Barbara looked into Boris's workshop, she was shocked. No wonder you can't find anything. Your workshop is a mess. It was true. I'm sure that if you tidy up your workshop, you will find your hammer, said Barbara. Don't forget, 
You promised to make some new tables for the school today. Boris began to tidy up. And soon found his hammer. He packed his hammer along with his saw and two little boxes with nails and screws. He also packed several wooden boards. It was all very neat. Now he knew just where to find each tool he would need. So he started to walk to the school. When he arrived, the teacher said, Someone has borrowed two of our tables and didn't return them. And now no one can find them. I'm happy to help, said Boris. Miffy said to Boris, I couldn't find my school bag this morning because my room was untidy. It's wonderful how you can find everything you need so quickly. You know, Miffy, I had the same problem. I couldn't find my hammer this morning because my workshop was so messy. Just then, Aggie and Winnie came in. We borrowed some tables last week. Goodness, said their teacher. Boris has just built us two tables to replace the ones that you forgot. Boris looked at Miffy and winked. You see, Miffy, he said, how important it is to have everything in the right place. Miffy loved to look out of her window and watch birds flying over the meadows and butterflies flying over the flowers. How wonderful it would be to fly, said Miffy. I wonder if I could fly too. Maybe I can. I've just never tried. I don't have wings like the birds or the butterflies, she thought. But maybe I could fly by flapping my arms. So she went outside and ran very fast, flapping her arms as hard as she could. But she just fell down. Miffy was very sad that she couldn't fly. She looked up and saw a brightly coloured kite flying in the sky. At the end of the string was Grunty. Miffy ran up to Grunty and said, Grunty, wouldn't it be wonderful if I could have paper wings and you could fly me like a kite? What a fun idea! said Grunty. So Grunty and Miffy ran to Miffy's house to ask for some paper. Miffy's mother just smiled and asked Miffy, why do you want to fly? Bunnies don't usually fly. But it would be wonderful to be able to fly and float. Birds and the butterflies are so lucky that they can fly. Yes, they are lucky. And maybe you are lucky to be a bunny. Miffy's mother gave Grunty and Miffy some paper. They cut out large pieces of paper and glued them to a frame made of sticks and made a large kite. They went outside to see if it worked.
They tied Miffy to the kite and Grunty pulled and pulled on the string. No matter how hard they tried, the kite could not lift Miffy off the ground. Miffy was fed up with it and very disappointed. She gave up and went into her bedroom. Then Grunty had a good idea. She asked Miffy's mother if she had some large crayons. Grunty took the crayons and began to make a drawing on the kite. When Miffy looked out of her window again, what did she see? There was the kite flying high in the air and on the kite was a drawing of Miffy. Look, Miffy, said Mother Bunny. You are flying at last. Miffy had to laugh. One morning, when Miffy awoke, she saw that her teddy bear was sick. His arm was dangling by a thread. Oh dear, said Miffy. You're looking very bad, little teddy. I'll have to take you to the doctor. Is there a doctor for teddy bears? she asked. Well, said Mother Bunny, the very best toy doctor is your own Auntie Alice. So straight after breakfast, Miffy carefully wrapped her sick teddy bear in a napkin and placed him in her scooter basket in order to bring him to Auntie Alice. She rode as fast as she could up the hill to her auntie's house. Will you please look at my teddy bear? asked Miffy. Mother said you're the very best toy doctor. Well, said Auntie Alice, come in Miffy dear and let me examine the patient. Auntie Alice placed Miffy's teddy bear on the table and carefully removed the napkin. Oh dear, said Auntie Alice. This is a more serious condition than I thought. Look, even the stuffing is coming out of his body. You've come just in time. Oh, can you help him? asked Miffy anxiously. I think I can, said Auntie Alice but he will have to stay in my hospital for one night so that I know he is well again. Miffy was very sad to be without her teddy for even one night, but she had to go home. Back home she felt very sad. She could hardly eat her dinner. I don't think I can sleep very well without my teddy bear, she said. Well, Miffy, said her mother, I will telephone Auntie Alice and ask her if you can stay with her tonight so you can be close to your teddy. I've already sewn Miffy's teddy together, so if she comes back here to sleep, I'll put him in her bed as a surprise for her when she wakes in the morning. So father drove Miffy to Auntie Alice to stay for the night. As soon as Miffy was asleep, Auntie Alice carefully tucked the repaired teddy bear under Miffy's blanket.
When Miffy awoke in the morning, she saw right away that her teddy was healthy again. Oh, Auntie Alice, it's true, she shouted. You are really the best toy doctor that ever was. Thank you, dear, said Auntie Alice proudly. And Miffy was very happy that her teddy bear was well again. Puppy, grunty, forest bear, pop.